Hi. This program is going to take a look at multiple covalent bonding as well as a special type of bond called a coordination bond. Let's start by looking at multiple covalent bondings by looking at these three examples. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw the Lewis formula for each of them. So again, as a quick review, I've got two carbons at four valence electrons each and six from the hydrogen. Um, that gives me a total end of 14 electrons in my picture. I start by putting the two carbons in the middle and then I'll put the remaining six hydrogens sort of equally spaced. The first place I'll put electrons is at the bonding sites because I know pairs of electrons must go there. And I've used up all 14 at this point. So we're finished. And this is an example of a single covalent bond in all locations. Now let's go to this one. Two carbons at four apiece and four for the hydrogens. Gives me a total of 12. Two carbons in the middle. Um, let's spread the hydrogens around, sort of equally spacing them. Again, the bonding sites first. So there, 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 and there, and there. Um, now at this point, I've used up 10 electrons and I can see that the carbons in the center um, aren't satisfied yet, don't have octets, so I'm going to put a double bond in there. So that's an example of a double covalent bond. And lastly, C2H2, so 2 times 4 plus 2. And this one will have our two carbons, one hydrogen sort of at each end, the bonding sites first. And so I've used up... Uh, six electrons here of the 10 that I have and the carbons are going to need significantly more so that'll put all 10 electrons in place and I have an example here of a triple covalent bond. Now you have to remember that this represents three pairs of electrons. Our total of six electrons all crammed into this very, very small space. This higher density of electrons results on a greater pull of the nuclei of my two carbons. They're going to be drawn more closely in here because opposites attract and I have a considerable number of electrons to pull them in. So as a result, I get both a shorter bond and a stronger bond. So as a result, as we increase our number of bonds between atoms, we get a stronger bond and a shorter bond. And up here we have a weak bond and a long bond. Now let's look at a special type of covalent bond, one in which both electrons are shared from one atom, not equally amongst a couple atoms. Here I provide the Lewis formula for ozone, or O3. What I want to do now is identify which electrons belong to which particular atoms. So I'm going to start at this oxygen. Oxygen has six valence electrons, so that's one, two, three. That's all of the electrons that would belong to this oxygen. Let's now move to the oxygen here in the center. It also has six electrons, but I'm going to show them as X's. So those two belong to that oxygen, say those two and those two there. And lastly, I'll come to this oxygen. And again, I can see from the dots it's already got one, two, three, or six electrons. So let's examine this structure for a minute. Here, I have an equal sharing of electrons occurring. What I mean by that is both atoms are contributing electrons. Over here, this pair of electrons came from the central atom.
This would then be an example of what I call a coordination bond, one where both electrons originate from that central atom. Now this can be drawn and shown a little bit more clearly in this diagram. I'll put uh, my three oxygens down for ozone again, and I have a double bond here, as shown here by two pairs of electrons. Um, this oxygen has a couple pair that are alone, and here I can use an arrow to show that a pair of electrons originated from that central oxygen, and we're then given to this one. So the arrow is a means of communicating a coordination bond. Let's take a look at the ammonium ion. Ammonium is NH4+. Plus. I'm showing this particular hydrogen at the top with a positive charge. That means that it has lost an electron if it possesses a positive charge. So if I'm going to identify nitrogen's electrons, let's use the dots again. One, two, three, four, five. And the hydrogens, there, there, and there. And this hydrogen doesn't have any electrons because it's lost it. I can identify right there. Those are originating from the central nitrogen, making it um, the source of the coordination bond. So the nitrogen is giving electrons to that H plus, and I can show it this way. And to draw this um, correctly, I should put square brackets around it to indicate that it's an ion. Let's take a look at the bonding in carbon monoxide, sort of describe how it occurs. So carbon's got four valence electrons and oxygen, six. So I've got a total here of 10 electrons. I would begin with carbon and oxygen in the skeleton structure and put a pair there. I would then complete the octets on their atoms on the outside. I've used up eight and let's give one more to that carbon. I can see in this arrangement that that carbon's not satisfied. So I'm gonna take that pair and move it in. It improves the situation for carbon, but it only has six while the oxygen still has eight. So let's move a second pair in. So the first thing I can notice is that we have something that has a triple bond. Now let's go a little bit further by studying the Lewis formula using dots for a moment. So I'm going to take that carbon and it's got two electrons here and two there because carbon contributes four. The oxygen on the other hand, um, it's got a pair back here. It's sharing a pair in here. That's four, five, six. Um, I can see here I've got a situation where that central, where I should say that oxygen is donating two electrons. So a more complete picture might show it like this. So that top would be an example of a coordination bond. One thing we should note about coordination bonds is they're identical in strength and length to covalent bonds. I want to go on now to one special case of coordination bonds that happen with transition metals. Now this is only a higher level topic, so if you're taking standard level you can stop here. Coordination bonds also make an appearance with transition element complexes. So here I have a transition element, copper, with a plus two charge. Take a look at say a chloride ion for a moment. So. Cl possessing a negative charge. That means it has one more valence electron than normal. So it has seven plus that one, eight electrons. So I'm gonna show those as lines. So there's the chlorine with its eight um, valence electrons. It is capable of donating that pair to that copper. There would be an attraction between the electrons in that location and the copper ion. And in fact, four chlorine ions 
would be able to fit around that central copper. So I'm going to tidy this up a little bit now, but that's essentially an example. These would be examples of our coordination bond. Now to tidy this up into a proper Lewis structure, I'm going to put the copper here in the middle and I'm going to show the chlorines and their unbonded electrons here. Now, the charge I'm going to put down is going to be the charge of the whole complex together. So we have plus two in the center, but we've got four chlorines at negative one apiece. So the total charge then on my complex would then be two minus. Let's look at an example of another uh, transition metal complex. Here I have aluminum in the center and a water molecule water molecules have two unbonded pairs of electrons. So the water molecules would then move themselves and orient themselves so that those unbonded electrons would then be facing that central positively charged aluminum and in there would form the coordination bond. So each of these water molecules one of the unbonded pairs would be attracted to that aluminum. So that's a quick look for higher level only at coordination bonding with transition metals.